Good morning, friends. Good to see you here on Instagram. I want to say welcome to this Friday Devos and Prayer with Darina. So good to have this time together. Good morning to you. So glad that you're joining me. If you are new here, please send a little hello in the comments. Let me know what city you are joining from. And I'm trying to get our Facebook Live going over here. Having a little bit of technical troubles on Facebook, but I am glad that my Instagram crew is with me today. And I'm looking forward to a little bit of time with you this morning. We are going to be walking through Psalm 26. We have been in this series, actually started at the end of 2020, and this series has been just a great opportunity to walk through God's Word together and to just be able to lean into a lot of David's words and other psalmists who are sharing their heart's cry, sharing their worries and their fears and their praise and their exaltation of the Father. So I'm really grateful uh, for this opportunity to come to you every Friday at 7 a.m. And I'm here on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. And then we always share the videos on YouTube as well. So if you ever miss one of these broadcasts, you can always hop over to my YouTube channel, Darina Gilmore on YouTube and watch over there as well. If you have a different time of day, that's a little bit easier for you to catch up. So I just want to say welcome to all of you. I'm glad that you could join me this morning on this Friday and I'm so grateful <laughs> that we made it to another Friday. It's amazing how um, from week to week, God gives us new mercies and new energy and announced this week. So thanks for bearing with me. I'm having a little bit of trouble with my internet this morning. Hopefully it will stick with us, but um, you can just continue over here. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want to watch the whole broadcast later, you can watch it on YouTube, which I post it a little bit um, after the live broadcast goes on. So today we are going to be jumping into Psalm 26. Good morning, Joy. Good to see you. Happy birthday, friend. I'm glad you're with me. And I have to admit that as I was reading through Psalm 26, this was one of the Psalms that I went, hmm, okay, this one is a little bit different. And to be honest, my temptation was just to skip to another Psalm that was a little bit easier and honestly, I felt the Lord kind of just saying to me, no, I want you to press in. I want you to press in because there's an important message for you here. And this is a Psalm of David. This Psalm, the subheading, at least in my ESV Bible says, I will bless the Lord. And it's interesting to see the language and the posture that David takes during this psalm. Now, I want to tell you an interesting piece of context that I learned as I was reading because I wanted to get a little bit of background information. I've mentioned this book to you before, and it's been just a great resource for me. It's called The Bible Recap, and there's also a podcast by the same name. So I was reading in the Bible recap last night a little bit of the backstory of Psalm 26. And one of the things that I thought was really important to know is that in this stage of David's life, many of his friends had betrayed him and joined forces with his estranged son, Absalom. And so there's references in this Psalm where David is talking to hypocrites and men of falsehood falsehood. And it's very interesting because we see that he is speaking directly to these folks who have betrayed him. He's kind of separating himself from them. And he wants to be a different person, a different man, a man of integrity. And so that gives us a little bit of a backdrop for Psalm 26 as we dive in today. Friends, I just want to encourage you as I said, that sometimes we're reading through God's word 
and we read something and we kind of go, what, what did that mean? (laughs) And the temptation at that point is just to skip ahead. And that's exactly how I felt with this Psalm. But sometimes if we press in a little bit deeper and we pray for God to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding that that's the time where he can meet us in a really deep way. And so that's what I had to do. That's the process that I went through as I was reading through Psalm 26 last night. And I'm going to read for you today in the English standard version. It says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Verse 6, I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming, thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity, redeem me and be gracious to me, My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. If you're just joining me this morning for prayer and devos with Darina, this is Psalm 26 in the ESV version that I was reading. And this Psalm actually falls under the category of lament. We've read many laments over the last several months. If you have been with me for these Friday teachings and a lament as we maybe are more familiar with it, is a cry out to the Lord, anguish, sadness, deep emotion. But it also can be an expression of need and an exhibition of faith in real life circumstances. And so this psalm particularly kind of leans a little bit more towards exhibiting David's faith, even in the midst of this deep betrayal that he has endured from his friends and even from his son who is estranged from him. So it's an interesting Psalm. In the beginning, I kind of felt like David has this tone of boasting. He's saying, vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. But here is the important part. It says, in verse three, for your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk in your faithfulness. And so we see that the source of David's righteousness in this Psalm is God's steadfast love. He's not boasting and being prideful in his own righteousness, his own religiosity. In fact, he is pointing people to God's character that God is full of steadfast love, that God is faithful. And as we see a little bit further down in the verses, it talks about God's glory, that God is a redeemer, that God is gracious. And so these are some of the things that we can learn from David about God's character through this lament, through this psalm that he is writing. And it's interesting because he uses this word walk a few different times in the text. Verse three, it talks about walking in your faithfulness. And then in verse 11, it talks about walking in integrity, which is also repeated from earlier in the Psalm as well. And so I wanted to talk about that idea of walking with God for a few minutes here. You know, this this concept of walking with God is mentioned all throughout the Bible. And to walk, if you look it up in the dictionary, it basically means to advance or to travel on foot at a moderate speed or pace. So this is different from running. To walk is more of a moderate thing. It means to abide with in the Bible. It often talks about walking with God as obeying his commands and keeping that deliberate pace, pacing with God. And that is very much what I see that David is doing in this psalm. And he's exemplifying for us who are reading and for the people who might be hearing this psalm, even in his context. I want to read for you out of my new devotional, Walk, Run, Soar, some examples of walking with God that we see 
throughout the Bible. I actually have a devotional in the book that's called Walking with Purpose and did a little research on this. So this is number three in our 52-week devotional Walk, Run, Soar. And it talks about this idea of walking with God, walking with the Heavenly Father. And so we're reminded that Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden. And there's this kind of personal connection that happens when we walk side by side, pacing with someone. There's an intimacy and an intentionality in walking together because we're shoulder to shoulder. So we see that with Adam and Eve. We see that in Genesis 5 with Enoch. And it says for Enoch that Enoch lived a total of 365 years walking with his heavenly father. Genesis 5, 24 says Enoch walked faithfully with God and then he was no more because God took him away. And so this is fascinating because Enoch was actually walking with God and it doesn't have record of him dying in sort of the traditional way that humans were you know, experiencing death during that time, it's like he just walked straight into heaven with God, as it mentions in Genesis 5, 24. Fascinating story about walking with God. And then if we continue on through the Old Testament, Genesis 6, 9 talks about Noah walking with God. It says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. So similar to David, Noah also walked faithfully with God and God was Noah's pacer and he gave him assurance that as he built the ark there was you know no sign of rain on the horizon but because Noah was walking with God there was a sense of trust there there was a sense of faith and so Noah was stepping out and obeying what God was asking him to do even though there was no sign of rain in the same way, we see that Abraham and Isaac were characterized in the Old Testament as men who also walked with God. And when Israel is giving Joseph and his sons his blessing before he dies, he says, May the God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, walked faithfully, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. And that's Genesis 48 verses 15 to 16. And so we see even that Israel's desire is for his grandsons to walk with God in the same way their fathers and forefathers did. So friends, I see some new people are joining me over here on Instagram. Welcome to Prayer and Devos with Darina this morning. I am walking through Psalm 26 and we are centering on this idea that David walked with God and so many throughout the Old Testament who were characterized as men who walked with God. Well, if we flip into the New Testament, we also see that Paul urges the church of Ephesus and all of us who are reading the New Testament to walk with purpose in a manner worthy of the calling that God has given us. And so Paul writes with passion from prison about this. He says, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. I love the message version by Eugene Peterson that brings just colorful words to this idea of walking with God and how Paul is saying, I want you to walk on the road that God called you to travel. What an awesome invitation to all of us today. I was reading a little bit from my new devotional, Walk, Run, Soar, for those of you who are just joining me this morning. And I want to get back to Psalm 26, which is what we're walking through together today. I think it's interesting that, as we said at the top, that many of David's friends had betrayed him at this point. In many ways, he was walking alone. But what we know from this psalm is that David was not walking alone. Actually, he was walking with his father. And when it says, I have walked in my integrity and I've trusted in the Lord without wavering in verse 1, we see that there's this intimacy, there's this trust that David has because he has walked with the Father. So I would just sum up today by saying kind of the theme of Psalm 26 is that we bless the Lord when we walk with him. 
remember the subheading for this psalm was, I will bless the Lord. And I was asking myself as I finished reading it last night, why? Why would it be called, I will bless the Lord? Well, it's a blessing to the Lord when we are in relationship, when we are in friendship with him, when we trust him as our heavenly father. And when we are walking in step with him, friends, we are on level ground. Listen to this final verse of Psalm 26. It says, my foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. I love this final verse because it gives us this word picture of David. He's he's in this actually really tense and critical time in his life. He's been betrayed by his friends, betrayed by his son, Absalom. And in many ways, we can imagine that he felt alone. He felt uncertainty. He felt fear. He felt shaky. Maybe it's similar to how some of us have felt in the last year during this pandemic. And yet we see how David says, I shall walk in my integrity. He cries out to God in this lament, redeem me and be gracious to me, Lord. And then he says, my foot stands on level ground. Friends, if we want to be grounded, if we want our feet to be standing on firm ground, on a firm foundation, we have to walk with the Lord. And so that is my challenge to you today. My challenge for you this weekend is to spend some time with the Lord. And you know what? It is a blessing to us. It is an encouragement to us when we walk in his steadfast love, when we walk in his faithfulness, in his grace, in his glory, in his peace. And it is also a blessing to God. We bless the Lord when we walk with him. So friends, I'm going to go ahead and transition now into a time of prayer. And we're going to pray through Psalm 26. As you were listening this morning, if there is anything that really just pricked your heart or stood out to you as I was teaching a little bit out of Psalm 26, I want to invite you to share that in the comments. Maybe it's a word. Maybe it's an attribute of God. Maybe there is something that is burdening your heart right now that is making you feel such uncertainty and you are longing. You are longing for your feet to be on that level ground. I want to invite you to share in the comments, and I'm going to try to pray over as many of those as I can this morning. And I just want to send a little shout out to my friends here on Facebook. I think we finally got our Facebook feed working. And so my friends in the Widow Mama Collective group and my friends in the Glory Chasers Christian Running group and my Bible study groups who are also here live with me, thanks for being here. And let's join our hearts in prayer together this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you for Psalm 26. I thank you for the times when your word seems difficult to understand, but that you allow us to push through. And I thank you for what you have revealed to us this morning through Psalm 26. Lord, it is our desire that we would bless you, as David says. And Lord, I pray that we would bless you in this season by leaning in to walk with you, by making space to walk with you, Lord. I pray, God, that we would remember who you are, as it reminds us in Psalm 26, that you are a God of steadfast love, that you are a faithful God, that you are a God who is full of glory. Glory dwells where you dwell, where you live, where you habitate. Lord, you are our redeemer. Lord, you are gracious to us. And I thank you for these reminders that David gives us in Psalm 26 of who you are, of your character. I thank you that we are judged according to your character. We are judged because of the blood of your son, that you see us through eyes of love, not through eyes of seeing our shortcomings, seeing our sins, Lord, but that we are washed clean, that we are robed in grace, that we are crowned with confidence because we know your son, Lord. And so I thank you that as David says that he is walking in righteousness, it is a righteousness that is measured by you and by the sacrifice of your son, not by anything that we do, not by our striving or our hustling or the things that we produce, God, 
but that you measure us according to your son's sacrifice. God, I want to just pray with a voice of thanksgiving. And as my friend Esther is saying here on thanks, on Instagram, she's saying, as it says in verse 7, we are proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all of your wondrous deeds So God, we just want to call out in thanks to you this morning. And friends, if you're joining me, I want to just invite you to write in the comments, what's something that you are thankful for this week? I know that I am thankful that I was able to get outside, that we've had some beautiful sunshine in this area. Last week, we had a week of rain, which was so good and so needed. And then this week, we also had some sunshine. I'm grateful for some job opportunities that God has brought my way. I thank you, Lord, for those. Lord, I thank you for my friends and family during this season when we are isolated in many ways or sheltering away from each other. I thank you for those friends who have pushed through to reach out. I thank you, God, for the friends that are here on this broadcast with me today. I thank you for um, my friend who is celebrating her birthday, Joy, whose birthday is today, and another friend here on Instagram who celebrated her birthday yesterday. Grateful for that. Lord, we are thankful for a friend here on Instagram who is able to spend time with her kids and her beautiful students. We are grateful for health, Lord. Another friend, Brenda, who is mentioning how she is so thankful for her amazing husband and precious sons. Yes, Lord, we thank you for that. We proclaim thanksgiving aloud in the way that David does. And we tell, Lord, of your wonderful deeds. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. As Shilpa is mentioning here on Instagram, we're thankful for your love, for your compassion that's new for us every morning. God, I thank you as Thelma mentions here for friendships. And I mentioned before that those friendships can be our lifeline. And even if we aren't together physically, Lord, that we could just lift each other up. I pray that you would even put on our hearts as we are praying this morning, if there is someone that we should be reaching out to, maybe somebody who is just sinking in loneliness or depression that's in our circle, God, I pray that you would just prompt us maybe to text them or to call them this weekend to reach out to them. If there's a friend who we haven't talked to in a long time because of these strange just circumstances with our pandemic, God, would you give us courage? Would you prompt our hearts to reach out. I am also just joining my friend Kirsten here who is saying that she's thankful for her parents who are alive and healthy in their 80s. Yes, Lord, we thank you for that. I thank you for my parents who are joining me here on this broadcast on Instagram and for the ways that you have preserved their health. And Lord, I just I pray especially for those who are dealing with sickness, who have come down with COVID, who maybe are walking a difficult road today. God, would you lift their heads? Would you help them to see the places where they can be thankful even in the midst of suffering? And I know your word says to us that we all will endure suffering. It doesn't promise that when we believe in you that we are somehow exempt from suffering, but it does say that you will walk with us. And this theme for today being that we would learn to walk with you, that we would carve out that time to walk with you, Lord Jesus. I know that looks different for different ones of us. And so I pray that you would just show us, maybe if we're gonna physically get outside and take a walk this weekend and pray as we walk, maybe if it's to sit in silence or to journal, maybe it's to sing worship music while we're in the car commuting or while we are doing our Bible study or washing the dishes, Lord. I pray that we would have the opportunity to walk with you, that we wouldn't forget about it, Lord. I'm so grateful, God, for the ways that you are personal with us. I see that you are personal with David in this time of deep betrayal and questioning. God, you were his ever-present help in times of trouble. And I pray that you would also be that for us, as Brenda mentions over here on Instagram this morning. So Lord, we thank you. 
We bless your name. We adore you. We are grateful for the way that you provide a firm foundation for us, that our feet stand on level ground, as it says in verse 12, in the great assembly. And Lord, I pray that as we stand in faith, in trust, Lord, I pray that we would bless your name, that we would bless you, Father. And we thank you that you sent your son to sacrifice for us so that we might stand in this place of grace today. And so I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for joining me. It's been so fun to be able to engage with you live here on Instagram and Facebook. I apologize if there was any um, sort of technical troubles that we were having with the internet. I saw it was kind of blipping in and out a little bit, but it's been a joy for me to be with you. I read a little bit today from my new devotional, Walk, Run, Soar, and you can find this anywhere you buy books. I know that it's on sale on Amazon right now, so I would just encourage you to check out Walk, Run, Soar. It's a 52-week devotional, and really you can start at any time, but it has a walking and running theme, and It also has, if you want to get moving, it has some coaching tips from my husband, Sean, who is a running coach. Your pace is your pace, friends. So you, if you're a walker, a jogger, a slogger, a runner, a sprinter, whatever it might be, there are some nuggets in this book for you. And as always, I just want to remind you that I would love to connect with you more personally. If you hop over to my website right now, darinagilmore.com. I send out a special letter for my VIP people who sign up for my weekly glory gram. And that glory gram always includes a personal story of something that God is teaching me. And I love to include a curated list of recommendations, great movies, recipes, um, even books that I'm reading or events that I'm involved in. And that's just a way away from social media that I connect with my people. I answer every email that comes in and I know that sometimes social media can get noisy. So I would love it if you would sign up for my glory gram. Thanks friends for being with me today and walking through Psalm 26. And I look forward to seeing you again next week at 7 a.m. Pacific time and 10 a.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. Blessings to you. Bye.